There's not a lot of external tools you'll need to unbox an Apple product nowadays. It's really just ripping off the tabs of the green arrows and you are pretty much set. Oh, so satisfying. Whoa, okay. Okay, here we go, guys. Oh, whoa, but it's crazy thin. Okay, okay, I'm digging it. It's like almost like a blue space gray if that makes sense. I'm so glad Apple brought back MagSafe. Look at that. Oh. In fact, in the box is a color matched MagSafe 3 cable. So it's also midnight color. Also it's braided um, because MagSafe 1 and 2 had a lot of issues with fraying. And luckily with MacBooks still, Apple includes the power adapter. Not mistaken, there should be color matched Apple stickers. And there are. Wow, I think everything looks like it's uh, made out of recycled paper and cardboard, which is very good. Unboxing opening experience. Whoa, guys, this is nice. What? Oh, and the classic hello. Guys, I can't, I can't believe the weight. Of course, we got our headphone jack. I don't mind the midnight color. I'm still more of a space gray kind of guy, but the midnight, I'm digging it. I'm digging it a little bit. Two USB-C ports, very helpful, and MagSafe. So now you don't have to dedicate an entire USB-C port just for power. Oh, 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 she's talking to me. Okay, so that was the unboxing experience, but how does this thing fare in day-to-day -day use? Let's check it out. The first thing that stands out to me is just how thin this laptop is. Of course, if you're already familiar with the 13-inch M2 MacBook Air, there isn't so much a surprise. The surprise comes from the fact that this may be the thinnest and lightest 15 inch laptop in this form factor and just under half an inch thin when closed. The size reminds me of the 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro but somehow even thinner and way lighter. The size is considerably bigger so backpacks made for 13 inch or 14 inch laptops might not be able to fit this MacBook. The model I'm reviewing comes in this new midnight color which gives off space gray if it were mixed with a dark blue. I really like the color, and while I always opt for the black or space gray color option, this would be my second choice. The back of the device has the same raised laptop feet that is from the design language of 2021's MacBook Pro line and it carried over here. The engraved MacBook logo did not carry on over to the bottom and it isn't anywhere to be found on the front screen bezel, giving the Mac a very clean and minimalistic aesthetic. When it comes to performance, it has the exact same M2 chip in its smaller sibling, the M2 MacBook Air 13 inch. This is actually a great thing because the performance of the M2 chip is incredible for laptops of this size and price. It is rated to be 1.4 times faster than the M1 MacBook Air, which is still really fast and perfect for day to day use, and 12 times faster than the fastest Intel MacBook Air. It is so powerful that I am very confident when I say that the M2 chip has more than enough power for most people who just need computing for web browsing, light photo and video editing, light gaming, word processing, and more. This is all while not getting hot in day-to-day -day use and it is a fanless design, meaning it will never get loud fan noise while you're working. This is what makes the MacBook Air so special, its size. This is the first time a MacBook Air ever got an increase in display size and the jump to 15 inches is very noticeable. It still retains its super sharp liquid retina display from the 13 inch version as well as support for 1 billion colors. It gets the edge to edge screen redesign from the 13 inch version with the notch included. I have said this before in my MacBook Pro 14 inch review, but the notch in actual day to day use does not bother me and it disappears into the background when you're using the laptop. The notch does house a 1080p HD camera that has a pretty decent quality, perfect for Zoom meetings and FaceTime calls. One major difference between the Air Display versus the MacBook Pro is that they don't use mini LEDs and they are stuck at 60Hz refresh rate, whereas the MacBook Pro can output a smoother 120Hz. For a regular LCD panel though, you will not be disappointed and this screen is simply beautiful. You can of course connect the MacBook Air if needed to an external display at up to 6K resolution. 
battery life is rated at up to 18 hours of Apple TV app movie playback, and this is not a normal use case scenario for anyone using this laptop. The best summary I can say is that with light usage, it can last an entire workday, and if you do need to charge it up, the included MagSafe 3D USB-C charger will get it from 0 to 100% in about 2 hours. The two USB-C ports on the left can also charge the MacBook if needed. The base model MacBook Air 15-inch with 256GB solid-state drive and 8GB of unified memory will cost you $1299. The 512GB model runs you at up to $1499. For anyone looking for a thin, light, and powerful Mac laptop, you can't go wrong with any of the MacBook Air models with Apple Silicon chips. For people on the absolute budget, I still recommend the base M1 MacBook Air 13-inch that starts at $999 brand new and can do pretty much everything as the M2 Air. For anyone looking to get the newer designed MacBook Air and want as big of a display as possible without shilling way too much money just for the big screen on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, this is the MacBook for you. It's the MacBook I recommend for the everyday person who just needs to get work done, now with a bigger screen. If you guys like this content, make sure to like this video and subscribe so I can continue to make videos that I hope can help people with their tech decisions. Until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next one.